This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 644, Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we got a hell of a crew with us today. First of all, from Monroeville, PA, the other mm. side of Pittsburgh, all the way out there. Zambo Town, Sorg. At Zambo Town, the home of the original shooting location of the original Dawn of the Dead. He's our, mm-hmm. that does not make Riz a zombie expert, but the Riz is here. Brains or Bra- something. Bra- brains in that, right? Uh, hi, Sorg. Hi. Hi. Also with us, he's back on the show, your friend in the mainstream media, Mainstream Matt. The conscience of the Wrestling Mayhem the Show. The conscience of the Wrestling ah! Mayhem. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and that response came from our friend in Poughkeepsie, New York, the only Mayhemer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is mad. Mike? The libido of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> Oh, I just said hi. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I just said hi. I mean, I don't know. Good. What do I do with that? <laughs> I was trying to think of the funniest thing of the Wrestling Mayhem show I could be. Yep, and then we was, also was have with us Larry. Hi. <laughs> what are you of the Mayhem show? Hi, Larry. I don't know. The beard. The beard. <laughs> the beard of the Mayhem show. No, I don't know. <laughs> Wow. Um, wow. Uh, that's how we started. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome to the live feed or checking us out later on the podcast and stuff. Please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links to subscribe to us Fuck, man. <laughs> on the podcast and video <laughs> form. Stay on or target. Look us, look us up on your favorite <laughs> platform. Drop us an email at that address. Good time. Good time. Good time at the Wrestling May- Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. No, the I, I don't know why I did that. 412-206-WMS0 at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook for Wrestling Mayhem Show and the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group where a lot of great conversation is happening. Join us live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern where we'll start, oh, about half past the hour and <laughs> have been talking about everything but wrestling or the things about wrestling we will not include on the show. Uh, just certain commentary that's too extreme for even this. Uh, that's every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live and other platforms, but the chat is on not, uh, uh, Facebook Live if you want to interact with us directly over there. And if you don't want to see a chat, just swipe to your left. And if you do want to see a chat, swipe to your right. Is that, I thought that's a different app. And I think the chat just scrapped out, Sorg. <laughs> there we go. I don't think... Oh, well, Facebook has been weird, so... Uh, just swipe to your right, Mike. So, uh, well, anyways. No, no. All right. The, things okay. happen. Things happen. It doesn't matter. The show's, show's still going. They'll live. You can subscribe to the podcast and video form. Look us up on your favorite platform. Let us know if we are missing uh, from there. And if you want to catch us uh, in person or uh, hit up some advertising uh, opportunities, hit us up on that email address as well. And uh, uh, producer Missy will take care of you. Also, please support the show on patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Like our good friends at the fan of the show, $1 level. Bo Diggity! Woo! Woo! As well as Ed Burke, Bobby of J Town. Tina Keys, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, and at the Pocky Club five dollar level, we're going to talk about. Geez, what we talked about Toys R Us and Black Friday and war stories and and and, and swag and the news and swag and everything. Uh, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, uh, Christopher Bishop and Bradley Ruthers and Doc Remedy and Dave Potter, the Tiny Shutter Podcast, and our Pizza Club ten dollar level, Billy F and Johnson. You guys can help keep the lights on with us. Here in the studio at patreon.com slash wrestling ma'am show if you're enjoying what is going on here. Man, there is so much to talk about this week. And I kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I have a list. I have a bullet list. I, and, is my crunching? I, anyways, um, 
I, I, I think I want to start with David Arquette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about this that? This isn't yeah. even a pay per view. <laughs> What's that? This isn't even a pay per view. That's yeah, what he's probably. That, that is true. That is true. So there's a video going around. He he was a last minute replacement, like two days notice, on the uh, Joey Janela show uh, with Nick Gage, uh, who is a scary individual. I've seen him in person at a. He went show. to jail. He has been to jail. He he, he went to jail. Who hasn't? And he almost killed David yeah. Arquette. He did almost go uh, David Arquette, it seems. Um, well, so it, they had light tubes. It was for the GCW World Championship. And uh, as uh, we have we have an email actually in from um, Alex Cars of Occupy Pro Wrestling. Um, so he has some commentary about it. Uh, this was the Joey Janela's um, LA Confidential. Is it, Joey Janela is actually injured. Is, is that correct? Yes. So, Joey Janela and uh, the guy he uh, David Arquette replaced. Joey Ryan also injured. Also injured, and now David Arquette. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there was a, a lot of light tubes. He seemed to sort of um, um, like there was. There, he got a really bad gash on his neck, and he seemed to kind of shoot mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Kate Gage at the end. I love Twitter uh, leading into it that he thought he was taking on um, his former brother-in-law Nick Cage. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, and after and, that match, he still might have thought that. Yeah, that's true. That's just, true. Just due to blood loss. Uh, like I say, Alex was there. He he did a three to three uh a three show stand um over the weekend um out there in L.A. Uh, he, he, and he's saying that um you know most of what the stories you've heard are more or less true. It was definitely a crazy match. In fact, he found it a, himself a little shaken up after the fact because I was not ready to see what was my first ever Jeff match. So, and I was thinking, by the way, I read this, I was like, Alex, I don't think Alex has seen that level of violence in person. Right. Um, yeah. Again, his first ever death match. Um, he says, kudos to David for doing crazy things to show. He still loves the business. And, um, but, but, and also you got to see D, you know, friends of the show, DJ Z. Burr, 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 burr. Facade. And, uh, and he even got to see like Bob Holly and D'Lo Brown there. Um, and uh, he also has a promo code. If you guys want to go check out the show on Fight TV, who's not sponsoring this show, he has a code for uh, W87121 to get $15 at sign up. So we'll throw that out there then and help out uh, Alex while he, since he's giving us some feedback on this. Uh, but it was, and, and Arquette came out and he had a big statement about how, you know, he doesn't blame that, you know, he, he thinks he got in a little over his head. He messed up and that's why he had the injury that he had. Um, but this, you know, and he was just here. Uh, we talked about last week on the show, uh, uh, Mike and I about seeing him in Poughkeepsie for, um, um, NEW and here at I IWC in the Pittsburgh area and having some really good experiences with him. Um, you know, surprise experiences, uh, uh surprise appearances actually with both of, in both those cases. Um, I, I don't know what did you, one, how many of you guys have seen the footage and what, where are your kind of impressions coming out of this? I have not seen the footage. You know, mm -mm. No, it. it, it I, I mean, I mean, the, the the gifts and the like, clips on Twitter were, like, were enough for me. So yeah, I think that's all you need to see because yeah. the the footage I saw was like maybe a minute long, and it was him taking some light tubes, walking out of the ring, like kind of collecting himself, looked like legitimately collecting himself, came back in, looks like some muddled, um, fighting, uh, with Gage, and then a pin. Uh, so it, you know, it it, it was. It looked pretty rough, and I've seen death matches in person and on on, on video before, um, and it, it, it looked it looked tough. It looked tough. Where do we put the the promoter in this conversation? As far as what you know, who, who bears the responsibility for for putting someone in a situation that they should not have been in, which clearly was the case here. Uh, Arquette comes out and says that to not you know the the promoters you know were nothing but good to him. You know, in regards to this, he he admits of getting himself in over his head on this case. Yeah, I, I so, wouldn't be surprised if if he wasn't the one who like called up and said, "Hey, I I would like to do this." Like I would, like he because that, yeah, that's not what he usually does. He usually he's usually with you know, or J City doing comedy stunts and <laughs> and diving from high spots but he doesn't do light uh, light tubes or anything he wanted to try it out there and was, yeah it, 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 i think I, it, was, it was mostly him going 
hey, let me do this. Let's try it. Let's give it a shot. Because I think this, I think this moment would get eyes on you. Mm-hmm. It'll get TMZ on you. Mm-hmm. It'll get like every news organization out there will know Joey Janela and uh, was it GCW? Yeah, yeah. GCW, even though TMZ did call it NXT at one point. Um, <laughs> it's true. I kid you not. There's a story. So what that happens says, when you let Ryan and Satin walk away? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, Riz. Are you yeah. telling me that TMZ is not the height of journalism in the year of the man 2018? <laughs> I'm telling you that, that true. Wow. Matt, uh, Matt you, get on, you get on TMZ's ass for me, okay? Yeah, fake news. <laughs> fake news. Fake news. <laughs> well, okay. Honestly, for, it, for a little context, though, you know, there was some, mm-hmm. you know, again, you know, I, I forget, it was Chatter Rob after the IWC event. Um, and I don't know that I, I don't think I caught this in, in the footage when I was doing the edit, but when um, Colt Cabana was doing like Colt Cabana things, like things we've seen Colt do like a million times, like the elbows, like the, you know, the, sh- the, the dance and the elbows that he does. Like David Arquette seemed genuinely excited about seeing it for the first time. Like this is not a guy that I think he's is a fan. A, he's a fan. Yeah. But I don't think he's a fan of independent wrestling. Right? No, probably not. He's not. No, it's not like not. he knows much of Colt Cabana and his catalog and what he does, or or Sork. has seen a lot of deathmatch wrestling. Right? Sork, he was a Jimmy King fan. He doesn't okay. know about okay. wrestling. All right, I mean, let's talk. Look, 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 uh, Mike, look. Mike, we need to talk you about the canon of of rated Rumble um, off camera. But uh, Matt, Matt, even I, who likes to think of myself as a pretty, you know good wrestling fan Mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to take you through like a move for move from cold cabana you know i i've seen maybe like a handful of of cabana matches so i don't know if that's fair but also at the same time i'm thinking to myself like again not as someone who is not a wrestler and has never prepared for a wrestling match like are you if you're going into a match with anyone are you are you watching a tape you know of a past match of theirs you know to figure out spots or things like that, like is that standard operating, you know, standard prep for a for a wrestling match? So you know, sh- is that something that David Arquette should have been doing and, and didn't and do, David, or like what David what was Arquette there? isn't a standardly trained wrestler to begin with? I don't even know if he sure? is trained. Like, I mean, what's what's his other than whatever prep they gave him going into like you know you know with Chris Canyon at uh, you know for Ready to Rumble and the, and the matches he had in WCW, I guess. Yeah. So there was Honestly, that. Honestly, I was going to stop you right there uh, and and just say, who better than Canyon? You're sure. Is this true? true. It's true. Not definitely not Nick Gage. Also, I just, I just want to throw out that out there. No, I, but like I, I think maybe like David Arquette probably knew it was a death match, but he might not. He might not have known what kind of death match Nick Gage has. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's probably where the Alex, Alex said he trained in Mexico for this current independent run. Okay, mm. so that's good. Um, Lucha David Arquette, I'd love to see it. Yeah, me too. Well, I, I mean, I I think this this leads to only one question that we as a Mayhem Society need to ask ourselves: Who is going to be the one for next year's Mayhem Mania? The book David Arquette versus Stephen. Oh. I mean, it's the question we all want to know. Oh. I, I man, calling your shot for Mayhem any of this early. I don't think Matt. I don't think Matt Carlos I, I, could no, take no, it. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm no. not giving away my shot. <laughs> shot. I have. I have a match that I'm already. I've written down in pen. It is folded up in my desk at work. It will be revealed on the first day of Mayhem Mania. I'm just saying. This is also a possibility. Sorry to add to this tangent, but so that means you'll be the, the first one to go. Envelope? Damn it! When somebody picks your wrestler and not messes necess- everything not up, not necessarily. But <laughs> if someone does pick one of my wrestlers, then maybe I'll hold a contest. Um, the side note: the, 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 <laughs> Larry was asking if we ever found out who was in the envelope. Guess we did reveal it. I can't remember who it was. <laughs> oh, what, what what was the the dream match from last yeah, year's yeah, Mayhem yeah, Mania? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Aleister Black. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. Mm. Gotcha. All right. Well, so that was a thing that happened. Um, 
Uh, and yes, chat room, that was a Hamilton bun. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, we also got to see uh, this weekend War Games, another NXT pay per view. Um, Alex also had some words on that as well. He 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 was there in person, but he said that his live experience was slightly underwhelming, partially because where he was seated, he could see the action fine, but there was also things that he missed because a he ran late getting for the show. And B, he couldn't see some of the details beyond the action, like the Dream World Order. Like he couldn't tell that he was doing a Hollywood Hogan bit until mm-hmm. he started doing like the the the, the crowd calls. Um, the and, black and white bows weren't a giveaway. I, I guess not. Uh, <laughs> and uh, regardless, he, he did enjoy it. I, I, I also I want to know, Alex. Let us know in the chat room how is watching a War Games match because typically that is like whenever those giant cage matches like hell in a cell and elimination chamber that's usually tough for the audience it seems but yeah i would agree i mean it's no punjabi prison match that's true that's the worst for the crowd (laughs) what is and the audience (laughs) and the people in the ring and everybody else watching Mm -hmm. everybody except great colleague matt you're saying um i was just gonna say like one thing that stood out to me about the war games match is it was long like it was really long, Sorg. Mm-hmm. Like longer than I would expect a war games match to, to to go on. It just seemed to just go and go and go and go. And it, I mean, it doesn't mean it wasn't good. I mean, but I, I think that the two one on one matches that directly preceded it were were probably better matches. But uh, yeah, that war games match was long. And Ricochet what, what did some things, long? man. There, there, and there's a lot of like double interesting stuff. Salt. What's that? Yeah, double moon salt. Double moon salt. Yeah. It, it was kind of long by design though, because you have. You have to, it's like a Royal Rumble, essentially, because there's time limits for people when they can enter the match. Yeah, but I've seen, you you know, know, at the very least, it was going to be, what, three minutes for each side, three extra guys had to come in. You knew it was at least going to be a half hour. Yeah, well, well, yeah, Um, but as far as, like, the match beyond portion of the match <laughs> just, just just seemed to go on you know it seems forever so weird i think it, it seems weird that they say once they're <clears> in <throat> then war games begins like, that's right like this this is always like unsettled me like this no, idea. It, sorry, war sorry it's like any good stand-up it's like set up 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 punchline is it is it yeah though? I, I don't know um, I do like I did I did like at the beginning when uh, when uh, the undisputed era tried to get in all three of them in because that was the first the one war games that they were in. That's how they started the game. That's how they started it. They, everybody came in at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was like, well, no, now you have to do one at a time, like a good boy. Uh, but. I was surprised they didn't do like a like what the normal like the old timey war games was where they just had people outside the ring and just go enter the ring right after, right away after the three. They, they did do after three minutes. Uh, well, they did. They did do the. You mean you're talking about them doing the cages in, instead? No, I think I wait. Yeah, doing yeah, the, the cages, cages at the top I, I of the ramp I, as opposed to I having them just waiting outside. Don't get the cages anymore. Like mm-hmm. the shark cages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless they're trying to sell merch again. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. I don't know. I can't wait to see the Miz <coughs> trying to take a uh, uh, win a ladder match via a, a man lift. Um, according to those latest toy commercials. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, we were talking about a lot of Toys R Us beforehand. I don't know yeah. where you're supposed to. Well, buy all to get those hit toys by at. John Cena on the catapult. <laughs> yeah, it's John Cena on the catapult. I mean, that's uh, that sounds like a TLC match to me. Tables, ladders, and. Catapults. TLJ, T, TC, TLCJ. Um, J? Yeah, Jib. Jib? No, no, that's a that's a camera thing. I'm working on it. I mean, I guess I guess the bottom line for me on the on the show is, and Takeover is awesome. It always is. Is that as good as the War Games match was? It could not hold a candle to Gargano and Black and Champa mm. and Dream. Those two matches mm. were. Phenomenal, both absolute of them. fire, absolute, absolute fire, freaking awesome! Like Alistair Black's ceiling when he gets in there with someone who's really good, his ceiling is so high. Like the same thing happened when he had that um, one-on-one match where he actually lost the NXT title to to Champa. Like that match was like astonishingly his good. His match with with Almas was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like when he gets that super good, and, and I, um, the takeover match he had with Adam Cole. 
Like when he has that really good opponent, like it's like it's unbelievable um, how good he is. I, I've seen him <laughs> wrestle like less, you know, <laughs> opponents, and it's it's all right, you know. But man, like his his quality in the ring just like shoots straight through the roof when he's in there with someone like yeah, like Organo or Champ or mm-hmm. Cole or someone like that. It's amazing. Maybe it's me. I'm still not huge on him. It's you. Yeah. It's no, you. no, but like but he's been in there with the guys that can make anyone look good. Right. I want to see him in there with someone who isn't like literally the main event performers of the card. Like I want to see him in there with a Steve Cutler and have a good match. Yeah, I think I actually have kind of seen something akin to that and it wasn't blowing my doors off. But I thought he did okay against Lars mm. when he had his uh title defense against him. I mean, look, I mean, it, he, it, you're going to have a hard time finding a not good, you know, NXT main eventer in that whole scene right now. Like that roster is so stacked. Like you, you're going to trip over like a four star match, you know, yeah, yeah. at the top of that card right now. Oh, I wait, mean, they're having him on the but, weekly show. But that's what point. I'm saying. Like if he gets called up to months. the main roster, like if you throw him in there with Jinder Mahal, mm-hmm. what's that match going to be? Because I don't think it's going to be stellar. Hey, standard, well, it'll probably be short uh, too. Yeah. So <laughs> a standard <laughs> SmackDown match. Um, Is that a sing joke? Which one? The short. Um, it could be. Hmm. Mm. So Black versus EC3. No, I think EC3 Man. needs to be the next one to go after Trumpa. EC3, Mike, I'm not like since he's been back, he has not been fire with me. He hasn't they haven't had him do anything. He what no, I mean his match with Velveteen was his only storyline. Yeah, what no no, I'm not even talking about I'm not even talking storyline. His storyline stuff has been good. His matches have not. I mean, let's just look at the fact that he and EC3 and Ricochet both basically entered NXT together at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And since that point, Ricochet has been, you know, straight up titles. You know, yeah. Ricochet has been spotlight in matches in uh, EC3 yeah, exactly. has had one storyline. Right. And, and I think, the, you know, we have and to, that match at TakeOver was great. And I think we have to ask, you know. You know, why has that, you know, why is EC3 kind of been put on the back burner? Are there certain things that they are trying to, you know, uh, get them to focus on, you know, before they kind of mm. maybe reintroduce and re-push them again? I mean, they're just, might I, be possible. They're just waiting for the next call up. But, that's, well, that's silly. What Can't was that, Larry? Say that. They might just be waiting for the next call up because they're going to send a yeah. bunch of people up to SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and, then, think, and I don't think I don't think the push. Uh, the TNA argument is pretty saturated doesn't, right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's, that's, that's I mean, a, kind of the same thing has happened to Keith Lee too. I mean, he's kind of there, yeah, but you yeah. know, well, Keith, what Lee, are we Keith for? Lee is just getting introduced. Yeah, like you, 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 unless they're they're coming in absolute fire, like uh, you know, like Ricochet, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that that can just do stuff like over the top. Like he's on a different level in, as far as what he can display. You know, mm-hmm. there's no intangible. Like there, there is like this guy is like in your face and amazing, right? And it's what everybody's talking about. You can't not put him over. You know, versus you know, mm-hmm. uh, a Velveteen Dream has been growing and doing amazing stuff, but you know, not at the rate of a Ricochet. EC3 is making. He's got. He, he's over with everything. I think his in ring has not been great. You know, at least you know compared to what we're everybody we talked about on on, on Takeover, right? For whatever, he's, he has a different style. He does. He has a different he does. style than everyone else on that show, though. Like EC3 is very mainstream WWE style. Mm-hmm. He, I, I mean, I'd argue he shouldn't even have gone to NXT. Mm-hmm. He should have gone straight to the main roster, but the main roster, there's no he room for shines. a guy like EC3 because he'd end up being Bobby Roode. Hey, he, amazingly, <laughs> he's even more WWE because he shines more in character, right? Yeah, um, I, I think he's but, the kind of guy who will probably do better once he gets to the main yeah, roster. Yeah, but he, he gets up there and starts mixing up, he'll do fine, but he's not going to. I don't think he's going to flourish as much on NXT for a while. until or And again, it's crowded. It is crowded. Well, yeah, like where exactly would he fit in? Because you have the Champa Gargano Black stuff that right. was going on in the middle of when he debuted, which is still, for all intents and purposes, going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can't, because EC3 is the kind of character who you almost have to put right at the top or 
you have him be the guy who's not on TV and you just bring him in when you have a thing for him. Mm-hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see how they develop them. Um, I want to talk a little bit, of course, when we come back about the main show. Uh, there was a there was a pay per view that happened in this country and involved both genders, and we can talk about that now <laughs> <laughs> on uh, from WWE this past weekend. And then, of course, we also want to uh, send a shout out to a uh, friend of the show that has had some bad news this week that we'll talk about later on in the in the back of the book here. On the show, um, of course, I've been sharing tweets about it as well. But in the meantime, I do want to give a shout out to, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on here in the Pittsburgh area. I mean, we just talked about the top of the show. That was an indie wrestling thing that happened with uh, David Arquette, of all people. And he was here in the Pittsburgh area, as I mentioned, with the International Wrestling Cartel. And there's so much happening at IndieWrestling.us just this week. Between the Indie Wrestling.us network at www.indiewrestling.network or and the uh, VODs and everything at Indie Wrestling.us, uh, there's been the launch of Angel Gate Women's Wrestling on our platform on VOD. Go check that out, including Ring of Honor's Kelly Klein against Impact Wrestling's Casey Spinelli. Amazing. A lot of fun there. It's good to see Kelly Klein in action again in person. As well as uh, our friend uh, Lady Frost, who, of course, debuted first match ever against us. Oscar up in Cleveland. Uh, I think that was was that before Mania, uh, if I got my times right, something like that. I think it was before Mania. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we we just put out <laughs> this RWA match the show with uh, WCW's Lodi. Man, Lodi that uh, um, shredded. Matt Carlin's got to experience in person, including that crowd. Hey, remember how I keep talking about RWA's crowd is kind of like the most uh, intense. Like anywhere that I've pretty much been, there's no indie wrestling crowd on the planet like the RWA crowd. Explain your experience with the RWA crowd just in that main event. Well, I was um, I was operating one of the ringside cameras, and um, there was a point during the match where um, uh, Lodi's opponent had a steel chair. Mm -hmm. Well, well, let's not shortchange him. Ryan Edmonds. had a steel chair, and you know Lodi was unarmed, and one of the fans took it upon themselves to slide their chair into the ring to Lodi, you know, to help a dude out, right? Well, at some point they say that sounds like a great idea. Let's make this Lodi's rules for all you WCW old schoolers, and I swear to you, Sorg, at least a third of the fans in attendance just all at once decided that they were just going to get up and slide their chairs into the ring too. So we had this like mini, um, ECW cactus Jack. Yeah. Cherry I, was, I was really thing. afraid. Remember that one? Yeah. yeah. That's it, kind of where we were going. Fortunately, most of the people offering the ring, uh, offering the, uh, uh, chairs into the ring were women and children mm-hmm. as you get at the RWA show. Yeah. You know, women and children who want to see blood. Um, <laughs> so, oh. Oh, all accurate. And all so accurate. they are yes, all just yes. sliding their chairs, and there's just a pile of two or three dozen ter- chairs in the ring until finally they were able to just kind of like somehow they 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 douse no, no that. guardrails. And no we're guardrails. Like, eh, we're, yeah. we're good. We no, got enough chairs. No, Thanks, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Not to um, mention, and then the return of G Raver, who was just you know made a good showing at the Blackcraft uh, uh, debut show. Yeah, and uh, then all the, and then and then, the, and then the, they've got this thing in RWA. If the fans really like something. They like as you said, there's no guardrails. The fans will just like they'll all get around the ring and they'll just start pounding on the ring apron, you know, because they're marking the f out, you know. <laughs> um, and and they did that for G Raver. I mean, I, I, the thought in the back of my head during this main event was multiple times was, is this normal? <laughs> and, and not normal for wrestling because I knew it was. It, it is not normal for wrestling. This no, is a no. rare gem. No. This doesn't um, happen anywhere. This is this is a rare gem of an indie promotion that people out there really need to check out. We're talking about RWA, and <laughs> is this normal for RWA? Is what I'm thinking in my head. Um, as as Sorg, as at one point, <laughs> like I, yes, I almost took a chair that was exiting the ring as the referee was trying to clear it out of there because I was getting too Spielberg for you, Sorg, trying to get the low angle on the, on the chairs. And, and you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll try not to do that next time. And put your gear in harm's way. Um, it was just, it was just such a scene, you know, and, 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 you know, you wouldn't think like 
Lodi. What's Lodi bringing to the table? You know, <laughs> you don't think and you think back to WCW That's and good. be like, yeah, damn Lodi. But, but, Lo- but Lodi but was there. Lodi was in freaking shape. Yes. Lodi had his gimmick. Right. He and, had his and signs. Lodi, Lodi and was, Lodi can work. Lodi was a staple there yeah. for a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that like so in our the way, yeah, they they're he familiar hasn't with been them. there since 2013. Yeah, and the fans are still there and remember him and are excited for him to come back. They were going crazy for him, and Lodi, to his credit, was 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 put on a him and him and Edmonds like just the 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 talent to be able to to, to draw reactions out of doing virtually nothing, like just <laughs> just an absence of real physicality for probably the first like five minutes of this whole scenario just the two of them just walking around and jawing at each other and egging on the crowd and stuff like that i mean that's great that's that's pro wrestling right Mm -hmm. that's what that's Mm -hmm. how it's supposed to work you know you don't have to yeah funny going back doubling back to we were talking about at the top of the show. You don't have to kill yourself necessarily to get a reaction. Absolutely. You can do what Lodi and Ryan Edmonds did and still get fans going wild for you. Um, it was a lot of fun. And not only that, we had Rise Wrestling uh, going on on VOD this week. Uh, actually, today, I believe that went up. Uh, Rise with a Y, our friends, uh, Law- uh, the gavel David Lawless and uh, Reaper Matt Connard in the main event. A lot of great action on that show. Jinx answering the challenge of Derek Direction. <laughs> that was an amazing match. Jinx wants to kill all the boys. Yes, yes. She was. I, what were we talking about? She wants to wrestle all the men in wrestling, right? Yeah. She. She was. I, I had a very brief conversation with her one time, um, and she was cycling through possible dream matches, and it was a progressively larger and larger opponents as she was brainstorming through her matches mm-hmm. until she was like practically like you know Andre the Giant. I think I'd like that one. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm like go get him. You know. It's great. Uh, a lot of great stuff. And of course, as far as the Indie Wrestling Network, we actually have a lot of content um, going on there. Uh, Rise Wrestling, that include Gory versus Reaper from um, uh, September, I believe, is, is uh, new on the network. Breakfast with Champions. Three uh, uh, Pittsburgh champions with KSWA, IWC, and Rise Wrestling. That's uh, the Reaper, Matt Connor, uh, Gavel, David Lawless, and Jack Pollock. Sit around a table over some cereal, maybe a little bit of beer. And uh, talked about their kind of uh, rise to their uh, championships. It was a, a really good thing. A lot of uh, good conversation. A lot of good reactions. People have been uh, 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 sharing with us on social media. And for free, if you want to check out some of the quality, the first episode of Hardcore Memories and the uh, first uh, ri- the earliest Rise Wrestling show we have on there from February are available without signing up to the network. You can go on to www.indywrestling.network and go watch those. Without putting in a credit card or anything, and sample those seven day free trial if you want to check out more of the action on there as well. Go check it out. Support indie wrestling and try and give you guys more ways to do it and more interesting stuff. We're not just throwing shows up there. Uh, we're trying to produce some stuff right here at Sorgatron Media Studios um, that will be you know unique and different perspectives, including that hardcore memories. That's about you know a lot of a kind of ECW discussions as well. So go check that out. Uh, all that link that indie wrestling dot us uh all right so let's talk about where these guys end up eventually one way or another something like the survivor series um <laughs> i mean hell half of these guys you know I, there was a good tweet you know I, you know watching takeover you know ray rose a guy i watched here for years mm-hmm. been on the show several times you know and ray Cole. rose the guy that still owes me a title shot he still owes him a title shot i mean i don't know if you want it after Fucking the action man. we've seen lately um but uh you know i mean these, these this, this it's really cool to see that kind of stuff you know uh ec3 another guy that's been around here for years um before you know getting the first big shot at wwe right um and uh and of course survivor series um this was wow i i I can't get behind the result of the clean sweep of uh of uh raw um i'm curious to watch smackdown it sounds like smackdown's been pretty crazy tonight Uh, (laughs) it wasn't a clean sweep i i know i know and i'm glad it has been called out was not a clean sweep that's bs that is your raw a show that is raw propaganda (laughs) thank you raw (laughs) hashtag false false media raw propaganda Propaganda, exactly. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stick up for the blue brand here, and I'm glad that we are. The tag teams did win uh, for SmackDown in the pre-show, as they should. I think it's much stronger. Okay, the top is a lot stronger for that roster. 
I mean, where we had to we had to dig up the Colognes and um and uh, a couple of those other teams. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> Wait, you're still here? You know? <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. a real thing. By the way, by the way, Sorg, Sorg, I- I've said this before, and I'll say it again until my dying breath. The pre-show is not the pay-per-view. I know, I know, I know, I know, but there's so when things. WrestleMania time rolls around, and I say it's a shame that so and so is on the pre-show. I, I don't mean, want anyone saying, but they're at WrestleMania. I'm like, no, they're not. I mean, no, no, they're fucking not. He's still good at the paycheck, though. At? It's probably a different size paycheck, too. Whether it's 6 and 0 or it's 6 and 1, the more interesting thing is where are they going with this? Mm-hmm. SmackDown is going to be on Fox mm-hmm. Network in like a year or so. For a billion dollars. For a billion dollars. And they. Buried it. I mm-hmm. mean, they didn't bury it, but I mean, there's, there is it. a story being that, uh, they, that is being told it. here, you know. And I'm curious to see like where this is going. They, they, it, it was, it was interesting to me to see them do a Survivor Series where they do this brand versus brand thing, where it wasn't that typical like three, three, three. You know, going into the final match, who's going to win? Uh, it was kind of refreshing to me to see like an actual decisive winner. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't really even think that it was a, you know, a clean sweep until it was the end of the show and they flashed the six to nothing. I was like, well then, well, where are we going with from here? Well, I mean, when raw has two champions that don't wrestle, really, they had to win. So that was already, even before the show started, it was two nil raw. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know what else is interesting too? Like, so SmackDown gets swept and loses, but like, think of all like who had the more over people on the on the show. Like, mm-hmm. who was more over than Charlotte or Becky? Even Becky wasn't even there, and she was one of the most over people there. A- a- and J- Brian, you know, J- yeah. and, and and these guys. I mean, so even though you know SmackDown's taking Raw losses, was, Raw was the heels of the night. Yeah, Raw's the heels of the night. SmackDown is the underdog that, you know, that the people actually like. Um, and here we are. So what's the next step? Um, well, are they going to, you know, raid talent from Raw to, to refresh the ranks? Are they going to bring people up from NXT to add to SmackDown? Are they just going to, I don't know, are they going to shuffle the deck a little bit? And then what happens next year at Survivor Series? Are we going to see, you know, them call back to this? Are we going to see SmackDown, you know, rally to overtake raw and will that be their way of you know building momentum for smackdown going into the jump over to fox so you know there's a lot going on here it, it feels like it's a long game to me um but i can understand why you know all the smackdown marks would be disappointed the the weird thing is usually going into something like like a brand versus brand thing like a raw versus smackdown um smackdown almost usually always gets the win because they need it. Mm-hmm. This year, SmackDown didn't need shit. SmackDown has the two, now three, hottest characters in the company. Becky, Charlotte, Bryant. They have the two best tag teams in the company. Three if you include the bar. I will. Like, SmackDown didn't need the aid of winning Survivor Series. Because, I mean, if you watch SmackDown, they're, what, they're still on fire. Wait, you you mean you mean SmackDown got to get over all their talent, talent without getting the W? Hmm. Yep. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> Brian gained a lot from that match against yes, Brock. Yes, he did. Charlotte Sh- walked out. Ronda, more or less, eventually she did. That's another thing that's interesting is like, we all kind of like, I, I think a lot of people took for granted that once they swapped Charlotte in for Becky, that it was a foregone conclusion that, well, now we're getting Becky versus Ronda at Mania because they're doing Charlotte and Ronda mm-hmm. at Survivor Series. But that's, things are foggy now. Like, where are they going? What's the next step with Ronda and Charlotte? Are they mm-hmm. saving it for the Royal Rumble? They've got a baseball stadium to fill for the Royal Rumble and they need a big match and they are missing a lot of their male, you know, workhorses for that. You know, they're missing the big dog Sorg. I mean, let's just say it, you know, <laughs> I mean, one thing, one thing I, I thought of, I don't like it. 
We could also build it Becky versus Nia at WrestleMania. Mm. And and I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that at all, but the seeds are laying. Yeah, well, seeds yeah. Are laying for it. she did have a lot of heat on Sunday. Yeah, nuclear. Nuclear. Oh my God. I, I can't bring you, that around anytime soon, man. You would have thought she just won the main event at WrestleMania for the third straight year. <laughs> <laughs> so someone uh one of my buddies sent me a picture of a kid who apparently I'm not sure if this was a real sign in the crowd at um Survivor Series or not, but it was. Hold on, let me. I, I want to get the wording right. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. While you're while you're getting that set up, uh, Tina Tina's pointing out that Survivor Series also uh, Survivor Series is also in Chicago next year. Yeah, if no anybody, boy. you don't mess around with. CM Punk confirmed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I want to know what Riz, uh, where Riz thinks they're going with the women's right. matches right now. Where where do you think this is all going, Riz? I mean, we got no definitive winner at, at Survivor Series between Charlotte and Ronda. Becky's still hanging out there. We don't know how badly she's hurt. Nye supposedly like oh, it, just a, a one-shot fine. killer now, it but she could get fed to Ronda next like month. Right, Becky's go. just fine. I, I, I'm she not has saying. a major concussion. Oh, and a Becky face. is fine. Um, Becky is fine. The Bullet Club is fine. Club. Everything is fine. What? Uh, <laughs> the thing is with WWE... They like to continue on a story, mm-hmm. especially with the women's division. Uh, you'll get you'll get your Naya and and Ronda and somehow Tamina is going to wind up in there somehow. Uh, but you'll get that feud up until the Rumble because they love they love dragging nonsensical uh, David and Goliath storylines until those wheels fall off. It's like they're, they're a big fan of them. Um, uh, Timmy, let's be, let's, let's be strong on one thing. Tamina is the Mickey James of that relationship. Oh. Let's not disparage the great the name of Fox. Mickey James in that way, Sorg. Uh, what no, the, I, I know, no, Alicia I mean, Fox is, at least has some talent. Oh, yeah, but <laughs> Alicia Fox doesn't get matches. She had a match. I mean, that's a shame. When everybody was injured. Um, What's well, not the No, she's not, she's not injured. She's not injured. No, she's she doing was the main event. Challenge. She was on main event. What? what are you talking about? She was on. She was no, on. No, no, no. Alicia Fox got matches when, like, on the Evolution pay per view when somebody got injured. And she was a fill in. That's what I'm saying. Oh, mm-hmm. no, okay. We're all around. We're all around. I'm sorry. I'm just distracted by the fact that, like, like how many of us sitting here right now thought. The result of that women's match on Sunday was going to be anything other than Ronda beating Charlotte. Like, I, I don't know about that. I, I mean, mean, I guess it, it kind of was had to Ronda be. beating Charlotte. It, well, well, yes, well, but they, that wasn't a that wasn't a, a victory necessarily. That was a W. No, but, but not I, a I have victory. a feeling that that was how that match was always going to go, regardless. Do you of think whether that's how it was going to go? If Becky yeah, was there. You, 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 that you, match had no. Uh, there was no way to to have. Anyone win that match definitively with a pin or a submission? So you think mm-hmm. that would have played out exactly the same way with Becky so, as so, it did with so Charlotte? When Char- so when Charlotte said, "I'm going to take care of Ronda the way you would take care of Ronda," they exactly basically the just gave her the same script. It's literally the same book. They just crossed off Becky on the line, but Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So is that? But does that? I just don't know where this is going. But now you but also now, have now, now with Charlotte. And they it's have a good to thing. do something with her, right? Right. And now they she's, can't. She's, now they can't just have like face happy go lucky Charlotte. They have oh, to have badass oh, Charlotte. No. Oh no! With have you seen Becky. her Did Twitter today? Did you watch today? Uh, the opening of SmackDown, Riz? No, no, no. Because uh, Charlotte, all... Charlotte came out like a total badass and said, "Listen, I'll fight any motherfucker." I don't care. Like I'm paraphrasing. So they really did take that. And the TV. The Iconics came out. And they started to mock Charlotte, and Charlotte literally destroyed both Iconics mm-hmm. oh. in consecutive matches. Oh. Yeah, so and she's like quoting um, what Joker from Dark Knight and stuff yeah. on Twitter, and it's pretty pretty amazing. Like she's kind of continuing that that uh, the the you know Becky's playbook but here. That's another thing you can see that's different between Raw and SmackDown. Mm-hmm. SmackDown, they're developing their characters over and over again mm-hmm. until they get something right. With yeah. Raw, 
you have my uh, man. You have you have, uh, you have Rhonda, you have yep. Naya, you have you have Rhonda being her ball by herself. Mm-hmm. That's 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 one. Then you have Naya and Tamina, mm-hmm. best friends. Mm-hmm. You have the Riot Squad, best friends. You have sometimes Nikki and Brie, best friends, sisters. How can they? And you have, and of course, you have Bailey and Sasha. The longest running storyline in WWE. And history. you know how I know they're best friends? Michael Cole keeps telling us they're best friends. They're best friends. And it's like it, they, they have one angle in everything they do. And it's not even the, it's not even the, it's not even different each and every time. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of, it, it, it's, it's that. They're so great. It, or it, they, it, they're so, like, it's just one of those things where I don't get it. it I don't it, get it's, why it's, SmackDown has this epiphany on everything they do. Like with, with their, div, with their women's division, with their, with gender freaking Mahal. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. His world title run sucked. <laughs> but, but, no, but it was oh, an experiment. It, it was, was something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and do you like, want? Do you want to? Oh, sorry, Riz. Sorry. Go, continue. I'm just ranting right now. But I'm yes, just going, <laughs> there's, there's, hashtag Riz rant. Why can't Why can't SmackDown writers just beat the ever living shit out of the Raw writers? They're the Amen. same people. Um, Amen. No, do you want to know how good SmackDown is? Carmella <sighs> had. Two successful runs this year. Yeah. One is a heel, and she's killing it as a baby face for literally the only thing that's different is a hair color change and R Truth. That's a big thing, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You put R Truth yeah. on it. He's, he's a rocket ship. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. Honorable, honorable <laughs> mention to R Truth the entire night of Survivor Series. Yes. Trying to get on the women's team, the Raw team, and the SmackDown team. <laughs> <laughs> I. Thank you for our truth. I I am thankful for our truth. I want to do that and, part and, of the show. And early. dressed as the gobbledygooker hey. tonight on SmackDown. <laughs> that man could have got Roman Reigns over. Uh, they should have tried that. Should have. Yeah. They should have. Jeez, that and um and and Dean Ambrose. Mm. Now Dean Ambrose, I think, is an interesting one. But then we were talking about it. it, it I want to touch on this. Th- another what, one that we're hey, no, for. Riz, Riz, you've got enough friend time. They're best friends. They're best friends. Uh, <laughs> They were best we, friends. No. How can one friend turn on the other friend like that? They're friends. Or... Chris, I'm turning on you. We were best friends. Uh, so, so Car- Collins and I were talking about beforehand the Dean Ambrose thing, and and, and Mike, we've had, we had a, a version of this conversation last night. Uh, but but I, I wanted Matt to kind of share a little bit of that perspective. And and again, you know, part of what what's <laughs> you're looking around, or you're looking trying to think what that perspective was. I, I'm trying to remember how I was doing my Dean Ambrose voice. Um, <laughs> but no, that's, but a, that's a Seth Rollins voice. Oh, it, it's yeah, close. Yeah, it's our first. He was doing a good one before the show. Much. You want an answer? I don't even want to talk to you. I don't, I don't, I don't the, know. But, I don't but, know. But Sometimes I just, you know, and I, and, and I just like, and then, and then I'm like, oh, well, I mean, and then I, you know, I'm just going to go flip this tire. Just, just shut up. I don't even want to talk. Uh, Ambrose, I'm, I'm, why I'm don't you tell me here. what you did? Yeah. You gotta be a little, you gotta be a little like uh, like the Parambas. but to be Rollins, you gotta be on your nasal. Okay, you both <laughs> anyway, sound like the big um, heads from Rocco's Modern Life. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. So so the so the Chronicle episode on Dean Ambrose was an hour long, mm-hmm. but Dean really only said about like three minutes worth of coherent things. You know, it's like. He's just kind of like, you know, he's, I'm in the desert. I'm going to ride my bike. Ah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working out. Ah, I'm so. And then he like, and then it, it goes on. He comes back. Um, you know, he's, he's been fighting his way back. He overcame this infection. He's talking about how he, how he, you know, he, you know, knew it was, you know, bad news. They never state, you have to know for yourself where, you know, Roman Reigns, you know, departs and announces that he's fighting leukemia because they never say it in the middle of the Chronicle episode. You just reach a point in the episode where Dean is just like, where Dean is just like bubbling and bubbling and bubbling. And then he just like snaps. And all of a sudden he just like, is just all hate and just like mad and can't still can't articulate 
his feelings at all because he's Dean Ambrose. But that's that's part of the you know that's part of his mystique is that you have no idea what's possibly going through this person's head. Um, there's another great part in that Chronicle Sorg, which I mentioned was my favorite part. Um, if you recall the Raw episode where <laughs> Dean is basically baited by the uh, by bacon mac and cheese, yes. uh, that he's the weak link of the Shield, <laughs> and they go through name. this, <laughs> and they go through this three hour angle of like Dean's the weak link, blah 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 blah. So they catch up with Dean. The cameras catch up with Dean like after this episode of Raw, and like the lines of reality and storyline are just gone, and he's just like, I you know I I you know I killed my body for this business and i and i and i hurt my arm for eight months and i almost died from MRSA and i come back so they could make me the butt of the jokes for three hours and i'm like what are we talking about are, are we are, are, are we doing like i'm dean ambrose or are we like i'm you know real guy and i'm gonna go kill the writers because they dragged me through the mud after i busted my ass to come back here in the best shape of my life you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Like, I think you felt that way too. Like that was a real, mm-hmm. it was cool. I mean, mm-hmm. I liked it. it I, was, I, I, I'm an Ambrose guy. I think he's so interesting. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that he never tweets. He w- refuses to reveal anything about his personal life. He's just this, the mystique he ma- maintains. It's so old school. Um, that's why I kind of like him. Like I, I have no idea when we're getting the authentic, real human being. I assume it's just, wall-to-wall character but Mm -hmm. like especially on this chronicle thing like it was like really good he's angsty undertaker it's killing renee young's career (laughs) (laughs) poor (laughs) renee young the the (laughs) weekly highlight of raw is is them asking renee can you lend any insight to what's going on with dean and renee just going you know, I you know I I try not to talk to him. He just keeps to himself. He goes. To <laughs> Are the you basement. okay at home, Renee? We're he goes to the so he goes out to the, the workshop. I, I make dinner. Sometimes he eats. Sometimes he doesn't. I don't <laughs> care. What do I do? You know. <laughs> Like, he's just out on his bike a lot our marriage know. is just like anyone else's he just like disappears into the <laughs> desert for a couple of days and then uh he's back in time for us to get on a plane to the next rock they're gonna exactly. turn her we heel. don't travel together it's a little weird i mean yeah. they won't stop talking about it they won't stop asking her about it which makes me think that there's another shoe is gonna drop and i don't yeah, know if yeah, it's gonna yeah. be like rollins getting in her face yeah and then Ambrose goes really crazy because mm-hmm. I mean, like he could go like Randy Savage kind of crazy if he start going at you know. If Rollins gets in Renee's face, they're gonna um, turn her heel. I oh, no, gonna, no, I don't do want it. that. You can't wait. Which for is why like, they're all do great it. baby God. faces. Why Renee do Young it. must turn heel. She's a, it's it's gonna be like the, the Stephanie heel where she just starts wearing she she starts curling her hair. She starts wearing dark <laughs> makeup and and uh, and like leather like tight leather pants. You're talking no, like don't, Fact Gene era Stephanie. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. She's gonna yeah. bitch yeah. slap Stephanie Michael Cole and walk, walk away. away. I'm in leather and bedazzled yeah. shirts. I'm evil now. Yeah, I know. My hair is teased. Don't trust this woman. Yeah, Mike, we're catching you under the uh, under the overtalk here on the on the internet. Here, what were you trying to say? I, I was saying, don't wish that on Renee because that's when Stephanie had all those wardrobe malfunctions and oh. everything like that. We don't want to go there. Well, I don't think she's gonna. I, I hope she's not gonna wrestle or anything. But but, uh, but see, that's why you can't turn her heel. Yeah, yeah. Why like, she could be the manager they, they honestly, that helps him like, win. We should have an emergency shakeup and she should just go to SmackDown. Why can't we turn her heel and make her like Michael Cole was? Because she's Only not better. that good as a face. You know she what? Less she good like, as a heel. There's, I mean, they could just never bring this up. So there's no reason to even admit that this relationship is a thing. <laughs> Alex, they don't have Alex, to say Alex crap. in the chat room. Uh, what do you think, Renee? My name is Mrs. Moxley, and you will address me as such, <laughs> Lady Moxley. <laughs> Lady Moxley. That'd be fantastic. It's such a weird. Di- There's got to be a, an end game to uh, it. We'll see. And I think we'll, that's what's going to we'll happen. We'll see what happens. I kind of like it, and uh, and I kind of like the. Uh, I am a fan. I know there's been a little bit of controversy blaming the writers and stuff of you know the lines like last night where he said like hey we all did some we did, all did some some shit and we're all going to pay for it and that was horrible that was I thought that was a that was amazing villain no- motivation is what that was to me yeah but as I was telling you before the show I I think when you say a line that when you when, you, when you're saying lines that are that well, the, inflammatory yeah, and salacious yeah. you know is it is it 
getting heat? Is it getting heat on Dean or is it getting heat on the company? I mean, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that seems yeah, to be well, everyone well, defaults. Yeah, but it's one thing. Say something offensive I, I, and people I've just get pissed off at WWE. Or like when Paige brought up Charlotte's um, brother who mm. passed away. Yeah. Mm. That's one thing. That is one thing. That's something that was obviously discussed beforehand. Or yeah. when CM Punk brought up Paul Bear. Mm-hmm. That was something that was obviously discussed beforehand. Mm-hmm. Th- and this, I'm sure it was too. But when you're a company that does Make-A-Wish mm-hmm. and Susan G. Komen, and you're saying that cancer is a punishment for being a fucking heel in a wrestling company, that's when it doesn't work. That's when it doesn't work. Regardless, I hell, it might have even been Roman's idea to use that as a gimmick. Might have been, possibly. Who knows? He's he, you know, he's he's one of the boys. He gets it, but that doesn't mean you should do it. Mm-hmm. I I think you know, Mad Mike's point is is perfectly taken, especially when it comes to Paige and Charlotte. Paige saying that didn't help Paige, mm-hmm. you know, and it didn't help that feud. It just made WWE look like insensitive jerks mm-hmm. because they pushed it a little bit too far. So mm-hmm. that's the risk you run whenever you go into that area some people like you will say okay i get it that's edgy that's cool but other people will be like no what's that risk wb has been insensitive for the last few years last month what are they gonna do when they switch to a network where they can't do that though because aren't there different like rules with it's gonna depend on what the yeah it's gonna depend on what 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 will the network tolerate what will fox tolerate Right, you know right. what will sponsors tolerate? Yeah, yeah. you know it's a, you know the, I I, the, I kept hearing the bar people, the bar has moved the bar has moved. I mean there was a point mm-hmm. where um, I, I've been hearing recently about you know how much blood we've seen on on the uh, on the programming and how it wasn't that long ago when apparently Mattel was the company that was leaning on them to stop showing blood on TV. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, I mean Mattel is still making you know action figures, but we're seeing more blood on TV. So mm-hmm. what has changed and what's happening? Um, it's it's always been accidental blood. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, but even it's been yeah. accidental. You know, like, you were seeing you don't them. Have anyone going you know, out there and blading black like, and white. Just, you know, stuff that just happened to happen. They, they do black and white. Matches. Everything. Everything. Yes, the stopping matches stop. But they, they don't. They didn't do black and white recaps on uh, Survivor Series. That's right. They were showing full color. That's right. Some, right, but something has changed. SmackDown was black and white. I believe. Yeah. No. Was it? I believe so. SmackDown and uh, and the website and the website. Yeah. When they do stills, when they I don't do think stills, SmackDown black was and black and white. And, white. Uh, and there were some uh, recaps of the, the whole Becky Lynch thing when they showed the recap on SmackDown. They left it in. They did leave it. They, in. Yeah. they oh, okay. did I leave it in it color. So I think it's just the network that did that. Black and white. Yeah, it's um. It might be Hulu. Anyway, we're off on a tangent on that one. That could have actually that could have been Hulu because Hulu is where they were um yeah. for a while. Hulu was making them cut out chair shots. They would cut to the crowd every time there was like a chair shot on a SmackDown. Wow! For, Even if it wasn't to the yeah yeah, yeah. just just it was just like a, like that's too violent like that was the line. Uh, this was years ago, but I don't think they I, not aware. I was going to say, keep in mind, Hulu shows Game of Thrones. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> if you have the HBO package, it does. Yeah, you have the HBO package, you get HBO content. But, but I mean, but, that's different. But all right, guys, we got to go to an ad here. I want to give a shout out to my good friends at uh, Slice on Broadway supporting. Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza right down the road here. If you're in the neighborhood, if you're checking things out, a lot of you guys visit Pittsburgh and do appreciate you checking out our friends here, here in Beachview, Carnegie PA. That's on the way to the airport uh, out at the West end and PNC park home of the Pittsburgh pirates. Um, they, uh, they, they, <laughs> uh, they, they've been supporting us for a good long time here, feeding the crew that comes in here through the night and really appreciate their support of the shows. Go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. I know there was a contest on there. I don't know if it's still going on for uh, free pizza for a year, so go uh, drop into that. I think it's a text, a texting situation over at sliceonbroadway.com, so uh, please participate on that, and please let them know that the Wrestling Mayhem show sent you. Kick in the door. Kick in the door, guys. We'll be back with the big question. A little bit about a a friend of the show that's uh, on some hard times. And what are you thankful for in pro wrestling this year? Right after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Becky Becky Lynch and Chris Jericho for the Intercontinental title. Becky Lynch, Chris Jericho. 
Can't wait to see it at Wrestle Kingdom. Jericho, Jericho's going to show up at Evolution wearing <laughs> entire wearing like a Charlotte Flair mask. R- just rip Oscar it off mask. Like Bishop. Guys, <laughs> wrestling's yeah. so good right now, yeah. even when it's bad. That works. So this week's big question is a question I like to ask every year around this time as we get ready to eat lots of turkey and uh, and become thankful for things or figure out what we're thankful for or survive the holidays. I don't know. Whatever your deal is. Um, but I like to at least like take it back into the spirit of the holiday and, uh, and, and, and ask everybody, what are you thankful for in pro wrestling? Mike, I know you're going to say the man. You know, yeah, I'm going to say the man, but I'm also going to say Lucha Underground. I'm going to say Lucha Underground. I'm going to say the man. I'm going to say getting to see Kenny Omega versus Phoenix live. I'm going to say thank you. I'm, you know what I'm most thankful for? You know what I'm most thankful for? Because all those things I'm very thankful for. I am most thankful for the Carlin's family. Can't argue I'm with them. I'm most thankful for the Carlin's family. He's right. Because they allowed me to accompany them on their whirlwind WrestleMania weekend. And I, I too am thankful for a WrestleMania in New Orleans, which was so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. And only enhanced by Mad Mike's presence. Um, Docu- certainly. It's a documentary coming soon from uh, WMS yes, Films. Yes, it's coming. It's been in post-production for a bit, but because yes, uh, yes. we're the, working on the, the special effects. The documentary is called The Smoother and oh. The Super. He stole my line. I was about to say, I'm thankful for the smoother. Anyway, he stole it. That's okay. Uh, I'm thankful for Aerostar, the greatest time-traveling luchador of all time, mm-hmm. and a very nice person who I met while I was in New Orleans. Didn't speak any English, but I think he said something nice to me. Uh, I just said, um, por favor and gracias. You said please? What? This por favor, tiny stuffed Aerostar thing. That's what I bought from him. Swag. Um Geez, what else to be thankful for? I, I too am thankful for the man. Um, I, I, I am just. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Sorg. I mean, there, there's so much to be thankful for. I don't want to steal everyone else's ideas. So, uh, Larry, jump in here. I'm thankful for the man. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> nope. That's. I gotta be honest. I've watched maybe three months worth of wrestling. This yeah, year, he's so. he's had a he's had the tough. Yeah. Season. I've, been dip, I've been dipping in and out. This he's has not he, been a big year for He's me. been doing the wrestling dip. I was going to say, Larry's got to be thankful for a New Japan app, though. You know, I, 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 yeah, yeah, but I, I haven't watched, I haven't been keeping up to it to date with it since Dominion. So, uh, I, I'll, Riz, do you want to jump in here? I don't want to steal your stuff. What? Are you thankful? Is it my turn? Anything? Thankful? Is it my turn now? It is. Sure. Okay, good. Uh, first of all, I'm thankful for being on the show, being here with you guys, talking about everything that's going on in professional wrestling. Uh, secondly, I'm thankful for the connections we've made over the, I've made over the past few years uh, with guilting RJ city into being my friend on <laughs> Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else. Uh, having conversations with wrestlers about other podcasts that aren't wrestling related uh, to going out and just talking to people like uh, Dalton Castle or RJ City or or Pete Dunn or Bobby Fish or any other ones that are you know really good at professional wrestling and talking to them personally, just thinking about that makes me happy. So I'm thankful for like just being a part. That small sliver of a part of professional wrestling. Wow, that was that was what? pretty good. What? What? Wow! You're sword? not thankful That's all you for got? the man, really? Man. Really? Very not. Nice. And the man? You're really? Not thankful Are you for thankful the for the man, Riz? Yeah. Okay, so be uh, it. Sorg, maybe man, not the man. Uh, from the chat room. Uh. I love, I love Alex keeps dropping us show titles. Um, Tina, Tina is thankful for the resurgence of territories in the, in a sense in indie wrestling. This is true. I think I think it's very very big these days. Uh, also, Brandon out in the KC is thankful for Becky Lynch's tweets. Mm-hmm. Oh, the best, the best. 
Alex Carr is out there in California. Says he's thankful for all wrestling he got to see this year, from catching a bunch of local indies to seeing PWG and the fun Survivor Series weekend that he had. Uh, yeah, you got that kind of uh, thirty-day stand WrestleMania experience there with that, and, and including a local indie and you know stuff that scarred him for life, thanks to David Arquette. That seems standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I also saw a disturbing a death match wrestling when I was in California a couple years ago. So I that seems to be the place to do with that. You know, I'm sure <laughs> so, David Arquette was just as scarred as you were. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Chicks dig scars. Um, also, Dave Ponder is, says, um, I guess he's thankful for some wrestling fans with a conscious F crown jewel, proving we aren't all mouth breathing uh, knuckle draggers. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and also, Wheels is thankful for Sue Young working with Sand Styles indie wrestling lately. Nice. So, good stuff. Also, um, Brandon is thankful that he gave Sorg a mayhem bump from Niles Plunk. Niles Plunk, we interviewed a while ago. He was the, he was the, he's an actual, he, I think, runs, owns a winery out there. And, uh, and, and he was on 205 Live last week. Doing what? Doing what? wrestling, sir. Oh, he's a, He's a vintner. Oh, was, He's a wino. Was he in that tag match? I, I think so. I think he had like pink tights or something. Ah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I was gonna say, I I was watching it for reasons, and I'm like, one of those guys looks familiar, and mm-hmm. I couldn't place it. Niles okay. Planque. So I don't, um, I, I don't know if that's what they were calling him, but I, I was reminded of a couple other things. I'm very thankful that I got to see NXT Takeover New Orleans <laughs> in person. Yes. That was bananas. I am thankful for. Every fan in that building that night who committed to booing the shit out of Tommaso Ciampa, you are all a blessing because God knows it wasn't easy for us to boo that man. Uh, related, but we did it. Really, you know what I appreciate um, this this year? I was thinking about this when um, I, was, I, I was sitting down or was thinking about watching NXT TakeOver, that there has been a mayhemer in the audience for almost every TakeOver <laughs> this year. Have you thought about that? Alex was just at this one in we LA. Get there. Yeah, yeah, you guys get there. Oh, we wait, know where we wait. need to be, and we get there. Mm-hmm. Which one did we miss then? I, I well, all I'm thinking, like, uh, I know Mike, uh, you were Rumble. at one. Rumble. In Chicago? I, I was at a couple different things. Texas. Rumble. Really? Anybody, did anybody go to the Rumble? Where was Rumble? Philly. Philly. Texas. Texas. Philly. Philly yeah. Yo. You were at Philly. Okay. I was yeah. Philly. So I think we've had a mayor mayhemer at every takeover this year. Aha! I, if my math is right. Here's something else to be Just thankful for. Just take over, right? Um, here's something else to be thankful for. I'm thankful for All In. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's been a little bit, but that stuff was lights out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no pun intended. Because hmm. lights went out. Sorry. I, I'm thankful for, like, there was a realization this year about the connections that we have with like almost every com- com- company in some way um, between, I know Matt, you have some connections over there that you've been working on the last several years. We're, we're talking know. to, we have a connection like right here. Sort of. yeah, when, well, yeah, yeah, it's purely like, speculation, purely speculation. That guy right over there. Purely speculation. You're pointing at me on the screen right now. Oh, um, uh, yes. Mad but but that, right I mean, yeah. they're there, you know, we have had one, and uh, coming up on the show here, uh, two Ring of Honor, um, I, I suppose contracted, at least regulars, uh, Niall, uh, Niles. Um, Nick Lendl is going to be on in a couple of weeks, who's been a reg- pretty regular announcer for them. Um, I've been seeing him do like the social media spots and everything. Um, there's been some interesting uh, connections with Impact Wrestling um, that I can't entirely talk about on the show. Um, you know, we had Shane Taylor here on the show, you know, uh, uh, friends of the show that are, you know, we're, we're still conversing with, um, you know, whether it be a Britt Baker, we just saw a couple of weeks ago and we, we still hit some, some, uh, Facebook about matches and stuff back and forth. You know, friends of ours are getting a lot of opportunities these days, you know, pe- you know, again, people that we've seen grow up, whether on the show or off, you know, it's been really cool to see, like, like I kind of had this imagination for what we've been doing for, the interviews that we've done and what we do with indie wrestling.us to see this kind of generation of talent and they were going to and watch them grow up across the industry and you know kind of seeing the seeds of all that all the guys that we knew were going to make it 
do that right mm -hmm. and and be a part of that and it's been really interesting to watch that kind of growth and that realization over the last couple of years so like the main when i say the mayhem nation like that's kind of what i'm talking about right it's you guys out there in the audience you know that are you know doing doing you know supporting your local everything from lo your local indies to being involved at some capacity that a lot of people have with this show uh you know in the in the chat realm and and uh you know members of the show to you know you know seeing those people become Elias <laughs> you know mm -hmm. right like really you know like like that's part of the mayhem nation you know and that's and, what and, I'm, and okay. that's what I'm really thankful for and I I lost my train of thought because Riz stepped on me. Dude, sorry, I, for... I interrupted you. Sorry, but it, I'll go, go along the lines like all but one person here started on this podcast as a fan. That's right. We just drug Larry on here. Yeah, we Larry's Larry's a hostage. Yes. Please send us money. Um, but. We all Larry started more as Kate, a fan. Kate, Dutters has not responded to that message for money. It's <laughs> because she wants a cut. Why won't you pay the uh, ransom? All right. <laughs> but like, we started off as fans, and then we started building off of that through through our through whatever we were doing. Like I going to indie shows, going to live events, going to, being on the sh on this show in studio with you guys being there like having conversations talking about things talking to wrestlers about things talking to champions in wwe about things it's like one of those i can't I, i'm still having trouble deciding why the hell did i interview pete dunn for fuck's sake it's because <laughs> i'm a fan that's a thing you I can say really I can't really wrap my head around it. Like, if, if, if you would have we that. have like just that one team, or just that that one war games. Like, I was realizing that I have filmed a match mm -hmm. for everybody except Ricochet and maybe Kyle O'Reilly. I can't remember if I've seen Kyle O'Reilly. He has had a bit of IWC. O'Reilly's definitely done IWC. He's done IWC. I know the rest of the guys have. Yeah. You know, like, like Rick, and Ricochet I've seen in person. Or at least somebody that resembled Ricochet under a mask. Uh, <laughs> like, like that, it, that was a weird, surreal moment for me, was watching that, you okay. know. You know what else was a weird, a weird surreal moment? Us getting shout outs on Lucha Underground. Yeah, yeah. that was weird. Like, like you guys, you guys. Except for me, because Vampiro doesn't want to say Sorgatron. <laughs> high, comp like, high compliment from Vampiro. I mean, I was Vampiro told not he, saying your name is a higher compliment than Matt Stryker is, saying it. Is it a higher? No, I got flipped off personally by Matt Stryker, so I think that had something to do with it. That's great. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had my acknowledgement. <laughs> so um, I don't know if it's better to not have my name said by Vampiro out of out of uh, protest or having Mad Mike being told to eat a bag of dicks. I'm still working on that. I'm like, I, I still like, I'm always constantly surprised by like how we make these connections. Because like, yeah, like seriously, that deal with the Lucha Underground was completely surreal. Like, what did we, Mike, what did we do? <laughs> what did we do? All we did was watch and yeah, like well, the show and try to Matt, spread Matt, the word Matt. a little bit. And the next thing you know, they're they're shouting us out. I mean, it, it's okay. I'm, Matt, I'm I'm over it. But Matt, I'll I'll tell you exactly what we did. I'll tell you exactly what we did. And I'll tell you in the words of Matt Stryker, we're working out, bro. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to that point, to where where the guy the guy that worked on The Apprentice was really excited to see me in person. Like that was interesting. Yeah. So, um, and, and I I really like getting to know, you know, uh, some of these wrestlers. You, you get to actually know them on a personal basis, mm -hmm. and just to to play just the the smallest role in kind of helping them along and giving them just just a little bit of encouragement and having you know those few personal connections I have with just like a just a couple guys. I mean, it's okay. I, I don't need to know every single wrestler on the planet. No. But the ones that I do and the ones that I've, you know, been able to bond with, um, that's really special because those guys are are doing it 
kind of living the dream for the rest of us, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's awesome. I, 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 you know, it's so exciting to see these guys, you know, y- you see them, you know, earlier in the year and then you see them like six months later and, you know, you could see like the growth and you could see them getting better. And it's so exciting. You're like, Oh my God, like there it's, it's getting even better. And, and, you know? and also seeing like some of these guys like, Oh yeah, I know Ray Rowe was the real deal like 10 years ago. Right. And now right. everybody else gets to see it. Yeah. And you like pulling me aside at like some of the shows and being like, Matt, this guy, mm-hmm. watch that one. And I'm like, all right, all right. Mm-hmm. You know? And then, he, you know, you see the guy and you're like, yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. and you're like excited because like you know we've we've seen you know one gang of uh guys and girls from you know our area you know make their way and become like national names and now like here comes the next Little wave facade and djz yeah. hanging out in la remember, remember, and facades out doing did a, facade did a damn 450 from the rafters oh, at I that show that. i didn't see that at that david arquette show am i right no. cars am i right <laughs> i am sorry my phone died so i don't have any chat room right now but, we'll see. Uh, He'll confirm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, it, I, I, I have a wrestling figure of someone who has sang the Captain Planet theme song. <laughs> that sentence in, a, in and of itself should not exist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it does, and it's real. Yep. Yep. I shot an interview with the uh, now former WWE champion in their in their hotel room in Pittsburgh. <laughs> like that's like weird weird to me but anyways well there's there's our self-actualization moment for this and i have an ad but i can't read it so you need to vamp until my phone comes back. Pop to pop. i'll vamp for you yes oh wait my phone, pop, pop my phone quiz, is hot shot. yes you've got a you've got to sneak into the survivor series you've got <laughs> one chance What's your disguise and what's your end game? <laughs> what, I'm still what trying game? to figure that one out. Yeah. God, Enzo, what the fuck? What the hell were you doing, man? It's the it's my favorite meme from the weekend. My favorite it all points to AIW, man. AIW, them and the, and and some of the wrestlers have been getting bad news, and we'll, we'll talk about one of those. But uh, at least he's had uh, Enzo. Like there was a tweet that says uh, sneaking into venues that have banned AIW. Uh, looking like this, and just a picture of him. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we've been having some fun with it. Thank you, thank you for you know. Hanging the best out. part about that disguise is that people noticed him in the disguise before he revealed yeah. himself. And they're like, "Hey, man!" They're, they're like, like, "Is that your Enzo? face?" Is kind of distinctive, sir. Right? It's so messed and up. It's, it's not like he was like he was still like hunched. He was still like trying to hide. Like you look and, very suspicious oh, in a second people, row, sir. People on television were pointing him out. Yeah, yeah. They were like, "Look at this guy. Does this guy look like Enzo Amore?" Yes, it does. So it, he yeah, did, and, and and it wasn't like, at least from what I've read, it wasn't like he was fooling people in the production trucks either. No, because I, um, I just read that somewhere. Yeah, I just read that somewhere. He yeah, definitely was. Everybody was him. looking at him, going, "What the hell is he doing?" Yeah. <laughs> so see, I, um. You know, you know something else you can't teach? The art of disguise. <laughs> <laughs> so so he gets up, and I want to see the beginning. I want to see what incited him actually doing it. Like, because the word is that after being found out on Twitter, he reacted by standing up and doing what he was doing. So he had something yes. else in mind. I it feels that was like an it feels he was like do a run in. On what? I don't know. I don't know. On the, on the cruiserweight match. I would have died if he would have tried to do a run-in during the women's match and Ronda would have just snapped him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> While Charlotte just woos in his face. Woo! You know? She just hits him with a kendo stick. Maybe. Jeez, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, no, he, bad choices. he was there early because he thought the Cruiserweight match was the pre-show. Mm. Little did he know. Jeez. Maybe they changed And the he had to the sit behind the one him. guy who everybody's going to look at because he's at every show every damn time in every in the same damn seat who was it red hat what, who was it the long hair guy i don't know long hair guy I yeah i know you're talking about no you, you know long hair guy yeah mm. you don't know long hair guy when what you a see guy anyways guy. hey i want to give a shout out to our friends now that my phone is rebooted uh this past friday saw some insane wrestling action at joey janelle's la confidential but not without some casualties. Our um, hashtag WhamFamBrotherMarcoStunt 
was injured in a match, and he uh, has had surgery to repair a broken leg. He looks to be making a full recovery. But seeing as we both share uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling and him both share the love for Nickelodeon crossovers, Occupy Pro Wrestling is looking to help. 100% of all proceeds uh, for their merch at What a Maneuver and shop.occupyprowrestling.com will go to their buddy Marco from uh, now through the end of January. So if you want to help that out, I know this has been a really big thing. Uh, you know, it's kind of tweeting about uh, some other promotions um, having kind of a, hey, help these injured wrestlers out um, kind of uh, uh, things. And and, uh, and I know uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling is definitely um, awesome for being a part of that as well. So please uh, help out Marco. Again, you get some cool, sweet Nickelodeon-style swag over there at uh, shop.occupyprowrestling.com and what a maneuver. And you help out Marco Stunt as well. So go check it out. And I understand there's some cool stuff in the works for the new year at OccupyProWrestling.com. So please go check it out. And this is another way for you guys to support independent pro wrestling. That's another podcast I know that we do here. But it it applies because what did I say a few weeks ago? We're going to talk about the good shit, right? It's not going to be just about WWE. It's going to be the good shit. Frankly, WWE was good shit this week. Um, and maybe we won't talk about any WWE because it's going to suck next week. Probably because it can't keep up, right? Wow. <laughs> what you wow. That's what, that means, wow. you, that means you need to watch some New Japan, sir. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'll, get right, I'll get right on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you don't have to start like right now, oh, but I mean, right. like after the show. Or, start it you know, right now in the meantime. Okay. Right okay now. Let us know what's going on in New Japan. Anyways, but that's how we do things. I, I, okay. So. I wanted to bring up a uh, shout out to um, a friend of the show that, uh, we, that we got some bad news this past week. And uh, his last show is going to be at AIW this uh, Friday um, up there in Cleveland. Uh, and uh, and again, our, our friend that uh, of the Marking Out documentary, been here in the studio. Uh, we talked to him more recently at Black Diamond Wrestling. I've had the fortune of uh, recording him at several matches. One that is a... One that includes a gift from RWA that has now hit 7.4K uh, views on Twitter of him um, um, getting punched out by Daniel Eads. That's pretty fantastic. Have you seen this, Matt? Uh, you can check it out. It's pinned on his Twitter. Um, but Magnum CK, the Magnum CK on Twitter, um, he posted, he had a pretty uh, uh, deep uh, thread that it's been on his Facebook. I, I saw it on the, on the Twitter, and I know that's been what I'm sharing um, lately as well. Um, but he, he discovered he's been having some injury problems and he discovered that he has a genetic weakness in the spine, um, known as spinal bifida, bifida. Thank you. And, uh, that is going to preclude him from being able to continue wrestling. Um, it's something that I've been dealing with for a while. And of course, this is a guy that's rebranded himself in the last like year or so, um, to great, like amazing moments like this is this this it's it's kind of become a thing where where you get you get you know back after an indie show and you try to find out what magnum did this weekend because it was probably pretty fantastic right um I, i've had the fortune to to shoot shoot his matches in uh, iwc kind of uh seeing the the change from you know what was you know his team with jock sampson um of the um um, mega plowers mega plowers thank you uh into the current iteration <laughs> of Magnum that, CK. thank you uh his debuts in ring of honor his re debut in black diamond wrestling uh seeing his action in uh rise wrestling with a y um and uh, we're we're looking to hopefully um probably service some of those matches for you guys to kind of uh celebrate what magnum ck has brought to us there is a scene where i think papa shango made him and his fellow production members um vomit black goo in uh the ooze, sword. The ooze but uh but you know i'm still you know he's somebody to follow i know he does the um um i think it's the parents the adult adult adults podcast um and uh he, he's a, a theater guy over there in ohio and I, he's always been an interesting one to follow uh, as far as that goes, so I definitely recommend that if you have not experienced Magnum CK uh, and are in the Cleveland area, please go check him out uh, at that show this Friday at AIW. <laughs> I believe AIWWrestling uh, dot com uh, is the site to get tickets and information on that. Search it, Absolute Intense Wrestling. You'll find it. Um, on uh, go go check in stuff. Our friend uh, Bobby F J Town, I think, contributed his uh, Hamilton T shirt. That was amazing. Uh, you know, he's been a good friend of the show and, and uh, kind of want to support him 
in this next chapter of his life. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, I don't know that this is something you come out of because it's a genetic disorder um, to, for wrestling. But and thankfully, he 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 is pursuing still his uh, theater career as well. So, mm-hmm. um, so that's great to see there. Um, it, it it's been a tough couple months between this. Of course, we did the interview with Sean Phoenix. Uh, about the accident he had with IWC. Um, and these are guys, these aren't guys on WWE, you know, that are, you know, mm-hmm. have that support system like Dean Ambrose. I could come back and be Surly on Chronicle uh, <laughs> or anything like that. Like these are guys that are still on the upswing of making their dream happen. And, and you know, we talk about the Mayhem Nation. Like these are guys that we have pegged, I think, for getting there, you know, until things mm-hmm. like this happen, unfortunately. So, and, Honestly, I, I'm going to be real honest with you, Sword. If, if I heard on the news, if I heard like news that Magnum would turn down an offer to like WWE or TNA or ROH or something like that, like for a full time contract, mm-hmm. I would believe it in a second. Yeah, because yeah. he, he's he's one of those guys that wrestles to wrestle. He, he to to entertain the mass. He 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 was and is what sports entertainment is, and would have performed well under circumstances, no matter what they gave him. Yeah. Uh, with him, <clears throat> I don't think he was going to leave theater. It, like his stage no. is his no. stage. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I, it, it, and I, like I've been trying to uh, reiterate here, uh, I, I said it on my Twitter. Uh, Champa's doing it on a main stage, mm-hmm. but he's not the best. RJ City, as much as I like him, and as much as he is very entertaining, he is not Magnum CK. Mm-hmm. Magnum CK brings to wrestling what uh, a mixture of talent and a mixture of entertaining people and a a mixture of actual wrestling and the Andy Kaufman of professional wrestling. Like it's just that, that mold, that mesh that, that that i never saw before in professional wrestling. That's why those videos that, that from RWA or uh, from AIW or from when, whenever you see him go viral, they are, Uh Perfectly right. done. And, and to that, I, I, there was one promoter where um, he had to do a minute match. The, 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 some time got cut down for, for some reason at a show. And uh, he, he basically had a match where he came out, did his thing, did his entrance, got knocked out, and then did that stumbling thing to the back. And that's where the promoter said, I was like, wow, it's a shame, you know, because that match was so short. And he said, well, actually, that's when I was sold on the guy. Yeah. Was what everything he did around the match, and that was I think that's I think that speaks volumes for a lot of different aspects about wrestling and and you know what kind of what, what makes you different. I just heard uh, a a veteran in the business in front of a lot of uh, uh, you know younger guys talking about you know what makes you different. What makes you know you're all Ferrari. What makes your Ferrari different uh, out there in the ring? And I think that uh, he he definitely he definitely added something different to that. Um, so I didn't want to stop talking like he's dying or something. That's not, yeah, no, no, he's, he's just, I mean, he's just he's, not going to be a wrestler anymore. Right. He's still going to do very great things. And that sucks. Mm-hmm. Like that, 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 that just, just saying he's not going to be a wrestler anymore sucks. Mm. Cause, cause he was really good at it. He was really good at entertaining people. And it sucks that he's not going to do that anymore in the ring. Absolutely. So, anyways, again, go check it out. Uh, check out what's going on with them. Again, try to make the AEW if you can. Riz, let, let, let's go to AEW. <laughs> let's, let's cancel our plans Friday what? and go up there. You want to go to Cleveland? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go to um, Cleveland. But anyways, because that's also that's also the last event at the venue. At, at Mount Car- Camel, yeah, Carmel, Carmel. Caramel, 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 caramel. 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 Oh, caramel. caramel. I'm going caramel. caramel. I'm sorry, AIW. I don't know if this really botches your your plug here, but Mark Mount Caramel is where it's at now. 
Oh, jeez, guys. Uh, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that to, to, to Junior. I, apparently, I don't know what I said, but uh, hey. Yes, yeah, sir. We're the ones that are supposed to have the potty mouths, not you. I know. I know. Yeah, really? Mike's on the show, and you're going to call me out. Uh, I guess. I don't know. Anyways. Maybe um, maybe he looks up to you as a role model. That could be. Me. That could be. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> jeez. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, go check out. Speaking of some local wrestling, let's give a shout out. Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. Is that how they say it? Oh, is that a good like announcer? Like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Spot yeah. on. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. I was sold. I, okay. I've been listening to I a lot. I want to run across lately. the stream by a taco right now. Just listen, hearing that. Listen, I listen to a lot of the radio <laughs> when I'm going over across the street to get my groceries. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, just, it's all just kind of like sinking in. I think I might have had a conversation with somebody that was completely talking to me in Spanish. Like he was like, I think he was asking about if the rain was going to ever stop. And I was like, I don't know, man. I think it's dry tomorrow. And I really don't actually know what he said to me. But I don't know if I'm just like, um, like, uh, like, didn't that happen to you, Mike, one time where like one of us like fell asleep to like some Spanish and started like answering, like, like understanding it and laughing at the jokes <laughs> or something. Sorg. I just, Sorg. but through I'm a man. Of, I'm a man of all languages. <laughs> of course. If anybody is, it's Mad Mike. <laughs> we speak the universal language. Wrestling. Yes, violence, violence. Oh, I was gonna say I am the libido of the wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, we need a T-shirt of that. Um, <laughs> quote of the night: I am the libido. Uh, but Lucha Fiesta, it's over on Fight TV. Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh, including Ultima Dragon, Sam Adonis of uh, CMLL, Bull James, Bull James. We still have your hat. Uh, Shocker, Caristico. What's that? We have Bull James hat? That hat that Shawn Michaels is wearing back there from that picture on Instagram? Oh. I think that's Bull James's hat. I don't know. They're using... No, that's my hat, Sword. Is that your hat? It's my hat. I, I, oh, well, it's a it's better a good story. thing Bull James didn't show up. It's, or it's, it's a better story if it's Bull uh, James uh, hat. Riz, Riz, is that really your hat? Yes. Well, well thanks, okay. We just thanks screwed. for watching the product because Sorg has, uh, has been Bull James for the past month and a half. That's right. It's a better story. <laughs> That's why, uh, you... <laughs> Thanks for watching the product. Car- 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 go check it out. Uh, Fight that TV. Way, so, uh, what? what, what, what I left another sh- inside. I don't know why I have a 1, shot. One thousand percent Guapo Sorg. What not? One thousand percent Guapo. I know what that one means. Uh, but uh, yes, Matt. Why'd you show my empty chair, you jerk? <laughs> I got confused. What uh, are you doing over there? Okay, that's your you butt. Have the hat. That's your butt. Okay, you is got the hat. Your, is this it's your hat, Riz? Hat Malibu. Why do you have a Malibu Owls Car Emporium hat? Because he's freaking oh, awesome. Why, why not? <laughs> Malibu <laughs> Owl has great deals. Riz, is this your hat? That, that is my hat. Well, I, don't my see, hat I don't see your name on it. Give me my hat back. Oh, oh no. It has oh, my man. sweat in it. Oh, I'll, get, I'll give it back. You if have a you, hat on a pole match. If you demand your hat back as if you were Mel Gibson demanding his son back. Now go do it now. <laughs> I want my hat back. Give me back my hat. Wow. Guys. My lawn. Holy shit. What? What'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned the top mm. titles in WWE are being held by women. <laughs> Those men's titles are second rate for losers. Wow. All right. <laughs> All right. The main event with some girls wow, now. Wow, that is a statement. I can't be No that. one has to. Co- we don't have to complain about Brock Lesnar having the universal title anymore because at best it's like the number four title in the company. <laughs> Who gives a crap? <laughs> it's like complaining that D'Lo Brown has the European championship. No, no, no. no Who no, no, gives no. a. F- no one ever complained that D'Lo had the European championship. Exactly. My point entirely. You shouldn't be complaining about who's holding the European championship. Just like you shouldn't be complaining about who's holding the Universal Championship because it's, it's a number four title this, in the whole this company. This is like Christian holding the light heavyweight championship. Yeah. Wow. There it is. Wow. Who wants to go next? Mm. I, I learned that if you come at the man, you best not miss because Becky Lynch has been on fire mm-hmm. uh, it, in the ring, on the mic, on Twitter, literally everywhere. It would not. Triple threat. It would not surprise me if she was actually on fire. <laughs> and even then, she would just say, hey, fire can't burn me. I'm the fucking man. Wow. 
Wow. Larry, <laughs> what about you? What'd you learn? I learned the lineup for Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> oh, really? It's out already? Uh, part of it, yeah. Wow, what do we got? Oh, Riz is um, oh I'm so, sorry, Riz. Um, we got uh, 60 what? Minute Limit Junior I, uh, WGP Tag Team Championship <laughs> match. Show and Yo versus <laughs> Desperado and Kenemaru mm. and Bushi and Takaji. Okay. Uh, Kushida and Taji Ishimori for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. That should be a good one. Mm-hmm. Okada and Jay White, mm-hmm. Jericho and Naito, mm-hmm. and Kenny Omega and Tanahashi. Mm-hmm. That's all we got so far. So I think there's still a few other matches that they have to put on there. But yeah, looks good. It's gonna be a long night, Sorg. I'll get. I'll bring the ramen or a long morning. Do a long morning. We're not. No, we're taking a nap before nope. the show starts. Nope. We're watching we're not, Tag League. We're watching Tag League. Tag League. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestle Kingdom. That's how this goes. <laughs> Here's how it's going to go down. I want to talk remedy. He's going to doze off again during Tag the league. That. Break for ramen. Oh, Wrestle boy. Kingdom. Oh, boy. What day of the week is it? Uh, I'm going to try oh, to stay up with you guys question. again. I'm going to try to stay up again. Uh, J- Friday. Try. <laughs> Friday, January 4th. So, <laughs> As in like Friday morning? Uh, 1700. No, I don't, that's, I don't know. Yeah, that would be all right because it's on the same date every year. It doesn't matter what yeah, um, yeah, like day it, of the week it yeah, is. Yeah, it's like, it's like Christmas. Let's have oh, it on a it, convenient it's day. A Friday. Friday. I, so I it's a weekend. It. It's that a works. weekend. There's okay, no okay it's a weekend. See okay. you there. There's no school. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Plows will be running. Yep. What? Well, might, might snow. The, the tea will be running. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It will. Uh, um, Mike, what did you learn? I already said well. You said that already. Riz, what did you learn? I learned that uh, Japanese superstar Yoshihiko is coming to the United States. Oh? You know who that is? Tell us, Riz, for the people that don't know. That is the world-famous, history-making blow-up doll. Mm-hmm. Where can no. we see this? Are you talking about the duck? Coming to DD Pro America. <laughs> the duck? What the? That's the only the duck that was on the river. That's the no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. He's no, come no, to no. face the duck. Although, although <laughs> main event dream match. Hashtag dream match. <laughs> hashtag dream match. Yoshihiko versus the giant duck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you have if you have the chance, look up that. Look up any one of their one of this person's match. I want to say person because, uh, you know, just playing out they, there. Didn't they have a match against Kenny Omega? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so, and it was awesome. I, 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 Almost as good as the match with Phoenix. Almost as good. Mm-hmm. Almost as good. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, from the chat room. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, want me to help you out here? Yeah, I got, I got it. I got Hot it. Wheels learned Weird. that Becky is the man. We knew that. Thank you, Hot Wheels. Brandon learned that uh, the why do they hold tournaments during certain pay per views, but they don't do anything with that tournament or the winner after the pay per view. They need to do more. Okay, <laughs> that seemed like more like a I statement than to, something you learned. I think they need to do less. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, Alex Carr's learned that D'Lo Brown and Bob Holly can still go, and mm-hmm. David Arquette oh. is an absolute trooper. Alex, not Alex, a super trooper, we- just a trooper. Alex, quick question before we sign off. Was D'Lo wearing a chest protector? This is very important. That is true. That is true. I learned I can't do live production at RWA anymore, you guys. Mm. I can't do it, man. It's too much. Those fans, the chairs, the, 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 they just is too much. Uh, yeah. Also, I learned that uh, Jinx will fight every man. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or try Ex- to. Or ask to. Oh. oh. He didn't. He didn't oh. wear. A, he didn't. He didn't wear a chest protector. Not related. Wow. Also, it's a simultaneous. Oh, also, read that at the same time. I learned that <laughs> that um, she she she's gonna be something about it was something about being known as the Jewish Chihuahua, and I'm lending a uh, Wicket as a mascot for. Her. Oh my what? god! Yes. <laughs> is she gonna like? Is he gonna be like Winston uh, Jinx, to her? Jinx to be Davey Boy Smith. Or? Yeah, I'm thinking the Winston Jewish thing. Yeah, exactly. Chihuahua. Like like the British Shit. Bulldogs, right? Awesome. So, yeah. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on. If Jinx wants to be known as the Jewish Chihuahua in the month of December, she needs to have a gauntlet match called Eight Crazy Fights. Please tweet her that. Please tweet her that. 
Tweet her that right now. <laughs> get on get that. On, get on that. Get on I, that while I, we close the show. I, Mad Mike four eight eight three is about to drop some hot fire on Twitter. And uh, yes, and, I am about and, to tweet uh, at uh, Jinx. Yes. That my idea. And Riz is not yes. here. Hi, He's back. here I am. Riz plays games. We might play. I don't know. We're either playing games Friday or we're road tripping the AIW. You can, if we are playing games Friday, yes, join us. Yes, because. We're playing some Jackbox games. Yes. We're either playing Jackbox or we're driving to Cleveland to see Magnum CK's last match. I don't know yet. Or, or we're playing a game called Dream Daddy. I'm <laughs> not sure. Maybe we'll do all the things. Wait, Dream Daddy? <laughs> Let's try that. Play that. We're, we're, play that. I'm gonna, play that. I'm going to make, don't, I'm don't going to make you is. play that, Sorg. Don't tell Sorg what it is. <laughs> I'm not. Do I no, need good. to keep safe search on? Yep, probably. No. No. All right. The Brohemoth Invitational is going to be Wednesday. We're playing a. We're having a turkey cup or turkey bowl for the with Mar- Mario Kart and wrestlers will be playing. It'll be on all of our streams. It'll be on the Indie Wrestling stream on Twitch and probably anything else I can hook it up to. Please tune in for that. We'll be able to I mean, check our social media. First and third place that Chachi plays. In the, this is true. In the yeah, just, well, 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 I don't know. That's up to Brohemoth. My sister challenges the winner. I speak for her. There you go. Matt Carlin's mainstream Matt one T on the Twitter. Happy end of sweeps, everyone. Happy Enjoy end of your sweeps. Turkey. Happy end of sweeps. And your CG turkeys on your channel, apparently. Enjoy the CG turkeys, everyone. Yes. Gobble, yes. gobble gobble. Gobble gobble. Gobble gobble. Larry. What's up? What what do you do? I'm I'm taking a sabbatical <laughs> at the moment. Take a sabbatical? <laughs> from, what do you do, Larry? From what? Your work? Yeah. I'm a big I'm a Thanksgiving break, man. You can still plug your work for after the thing. Oh, yeah. If they could be listening over the break. Just come over to Sorg's place. And what? No, no, no. Plug your business, not th- to come here. What do you do? What? What do you do? I build stuff, man. What? I build stuff. You build stuff. Man, we got to work on your advertising techniques yeah, here. Well. You got a free plug on a, on, a, on a podcast that's listened by tens and tens of people. <laughs> I think they're all following my Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> Looking into the void. <laughs> Dark Forge yeah. Studios on Twitter. Dark Forge does what? What the hell? No, is stuff? I don't remember I don't what it is on Twitter, <laughs> but that's not it. Dark. For- what is your your website? Uh, DarkForgeStudios.co. There you go. I think if it's you dark, need a prop. I believe it's dark, or... dark Dark Forge Design on Twitter. Yeah, you some, do something some, with that. Well, some jerk got their. Twitter blocked who stole that name. That Aww. son of a bitch. Yeah. Son of a bitch. So much good stuff going on. Oh, Thank man. you, everybody, on the uh, chats and everything. Tens of tens served. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, what, what is Tina? <laughs> Riz, what'd you do? <laughs> Anyways, what'd we'll I see do? you guys next time. Mayhem what out. What? What'd I do? This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.